let's look at our first two polynomials. We're going to add this first polynomial, negative 8x to the third, plus 3x squared, plus 6, plus our second polynomial, 2x to the third, minus 7x squared, minus 3. Now remember, when a polynomial has three terms, it's called a trinomial. So we're adding this trinomial with our second trinomial. Just to review a few terms, remember that there are only two terms in our polynomial, that's a binomial, and if we only had one term in our polynomial, that's called a monomial. Also, the degree of the polynomial happens to be the highest power. So in our first trinomial, we would say that the degree was 3. Similarly, in our second polynomial, this degree would also be considered 3. Now let's add these two trinomials. To add the two trinomials, what we're going to do is to collect like terms. We've done this before. We look at the variable portion and look for the variables that match up exactly. Here I see an eight, a negative 8x to the third and a positive 2x to the third. To combine like terms, we simply combine numerical coefficients. Negative 8 plus positive 2 gives me a sum of negative 6. So that gives me negative 6. And the variable portion remains the same. We're adding these together. Don't get confused with multiplying monomials. We're adding these so these variables remain exactly the same. Don't touch those. Let's move on. I see a 3x squared and I see a negative 7x squared. Again, I have some like terms. Positive 3, negative 7 is equal to negative 4. So I write that as negative 4x to the second power. Again, notice that the variable portion stays the same because I'm not multiplying these monomials, I'm adding them together. I'm adding 3x squared and negative 7x squared. Now I see I have one number left here. I have 6 and a negative 3. Well, that's simple. That's just 3. So notice when I started with this first trinomial, added it to my second trinomial, I get this one right below, negative 6x to the third minus 4x squared plus 3. Also, a trinomial. Let's look at our second one. The major difference between this first, this first example here and this one down here is notice we see our friends, the fractions. So we're going to have to work with our fractions. Again, let's review the terminology. This first polynomial has three terms called a trinomial. The highest power is 2, so we would call this a trinomial degree 2. Similarly, this would be a trinomial of degree 2. Let's collect like terms. I see I have a negative 1 3rd x squared and a positive 1 4th x squared. So these two are like terms. What I'm going to have to do then is to add negative 1 3rd and positive 1 4th, going back to our fractions that is. So we're going to go ahead and leave a little space to write our solution and let's do the arithmetic right below it. Let's write negative one-third plus positive one-fourth. Now don't forget, when we're adding fractions, we need to find that common denominator. In this case, that's 12. Don't forget, the first fraction was negative. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 1, excuse me, 3 times 4 is 12. 1 times 4 is 4. Our second fraction, 4 times 3 is 12. 1 times 3 is 3. So we can just convert it to a common denominator. Now we're ready to finish this addition. Negative 4 and positive 3, negative 1. So the sum there is negative 1 12 So negative 1 and 1 third x squared plus positive 1 fourth x squared is equal to negative 1 12th x squared. Probably the most difficult part of this particular problem is the arithmetic. Let's move on. We have negative 6x, and I identify a like term in my second trinomial, a positive 5x. Again, this is simple. For adding these like terms, just combine numerical coefficients. 
negative 6, positive 5, that's equal to negative 1. Now we don't have to write the negative 1, we can just represent that as negative x, that's the same as negative 1x. Finally, I have negative 1 twelfth and negative 1 third. Again, the problem's arithmetic, isn't it? So let's go ahead and do that addition. We have negative 1 twelfth. At least these fractions aren't too bad because it's easy to identify the LCD. Negative 1 twelfth and negative 1 third. Common denominator, 12. So the first fraction is in fine form, minus, again, we need to rewrite negative 1 third as twelfths. That is the same thing as negative 4 twelfths. Adding these two fractions together, once I have that common denominator, negative 1 and negative 4, give me a negative 5, all over 12. So there we have it. One, negative 1 twelfth and negative 1 third add up to negative 5 twelfths. Again, we have a trinomial. So the solution, when we added these two trinomials, is negative 1 twelfth x squared minus x minus 5 twelfths. Be very, you get tired of doing the arithmetic, but sometimes the arithmetic is the most difficult part of the problem. The key thing to remember here when we're adding these polynomials is just add the numerical coefficients, leave the variable portion alone. Because you just finished the chapter when we multiplied monomials, I know you want to play around with those exponents, but please don't do that. Leave those alone. Notice all we did was combine numerical coefficients, and we keep the exponent part just as it is. Let's now subtract some polynomials. We're going to subtract the following. 5x to the third minus 15x to the second plus 6x minus 3. Subtract, and here's our second polynomial. Negative 4x to the third minus 10x squared plus 5x plus 13. Notice that each of these polynomials has four different terms. Previously, we, t we talked about the fact that if there are only three terms, those were called trinomials, two terms, binomials, just one term, a monomial. There is no name or any special name for a polynomial with four terms. From four terms and above, we just call them polynomials. So we have our first polynomial, and we're going to subtract our second. The difference between subtracting polynomials, the difference between adding and subtracting them, is when we subtract the second polynomial, what the subtraction sign does is changes the sign of every term in that second polynomial. So it looks like this. This here, the subtraction sign becomes addition. The negative 4x to the third changes to the opposite sign. Since now it's negative, it becomes positive. Negative 10x to the second, the same thing happens. It's negative, it now becomes positive. Positive 5x, it now becomes negative 5x. And finally, plus 13 becomes minus 13. Now that we made the sign change, notice what we did was we changed our subtraction problem to addition. So now we return to adding these two polynomials. To add the polynomials, remember we identify like terms and then combine numerical coefficients. So here we go. I see a 5x to the third up front. In my second polynomial, I see a 4x to the third. I've got like terms. I'm going to now combine their numerical coefficients. 5 plus 4, 9. That gives me a total of 9x to the third. Again, it's very important to remember that when we're adding these polynomials, the variable portion remains the same. Notice it was x to the third and x to the third. It remains x to the third. We are adding. We are not multiplying. Let's continue. I see a negative 15x to the second. In my first polynomial, I see a positive 10x to the second in my second polynomial. Combine numerical coefficients, negative 15 plus positive 10 
is equal to negative 5. So that gives me negative 5. And again, very important, don't forget, leave that variable portion as is. That's not changing one bit. Let's continue. I have a 6x and I have a negative 5x. Again, combine numerical coefficients. 6 minus 5 is 1. Again, we don't have to write the 1 in front of the x, so we'll just write this as plus x. Finally, I see I have a negative 3 and a negative 13. We simply add those two together to get a total of negative 16. So when I add these two polynomials, or excuse me, I started by subtracting. When I subtract these two polynomials, I change it really to an addition problem by changing the subtraction sign to addition, thus changing every single one of the signs within the second polynomial to the opposite sign that it is, collecting like terms as we did here, remembering not to touch the variable portion of each term, they're all remaining the same, and my solution here is 9x to the third minus 5x squared plus x minus 16.